Hello, it's a new day and that means another video here on the Alpha Clash set one, various different colors that are gonna be included in that set. So we're, we're gonna be talking about the green stuff today, which uh, I think goes well with the fact that we just covered the black starter deck. The green is gonna be the other starter deck. And, uh, and green has some pretty cool things going on. I think it's kind of a more of a, maybe a swarm focused deck style. And yeah, so we're going to talk about the contender first. And first off, we have Magnate Awakened. So Magnate, just like Moxie, has 30 HP, one attack, zero defense. He is from Earth. He is also an alpha, so he's super powered, right? We have those two abilities at 30 and below HP. Alpha clash cards you control get plus zero, plus one, right? So this is more incentive to swarm the field. At 10 HP or lower, we have once per turn during your primary phase, you may engage this card. Once again, that means to tap it, right? Exhaust it, whatever you want to call it. If you do, target opponent discards one card. So, you know, it's it's pretty good. Uh, obviously, making your opponent discard cards each turn is uh, pretty brutal. And there are other cards in this game that let you consistently do that. So you can really just oppress your opponent. And that's really like Magnate is a swarm deck, I think, but he also very much has that kind of like oppression feel, big big time Homelander vibes here. So uh, yeah, there's a contender. Let's start taking a look at the other Magnate cards. Alrighty, so we got Magnate Cunning Planner. This is a common alpha clash card. One, 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 trigger defeat, you may draw one card. So, yeah, I mean, this is very similar to what we saw with Moxie, right? Moxie's was trigger play. You may draw a card. Magnate's is trigger defeat. You may draw one card. And I definitely think there's a world where you're going to see dual color decks running, stuff like that. If there are more cards like this in the other colors, you can pretty easily have a good swath of one drops that just help you draw more cards and keep your hand healthy. Magnate does have different ways to possibly trigger this. And of course you can use it as a chump blocker or a little attacker and your opponent's gonna have to defeat it eventually. And it's just gonna give you a free card. So it's pretty straightforward, not much else to say here. Anything that would sacrifice cards is going to benefit from this. And let's move on to the next one. Next up, we have Menacing Magnate. This is a 2-2-1 two, two, uncommon alpha clash card. It has two keywords, breakthrough and flight. So keep in mind, because you know presumably you're running Magnate here, you're getting that plus one to defense. So this is actually a 2-2-2 two, two, two with breakthrough and flight. I think the breakthrough is uh, not really exciting right off the bat, but if you're using clash cards or accessories to improve his power, his attack. This does get more interesting. The fact that it has flight is also interesting. They're kind of like, in some ways, they're almost like two different routes of damage, right? You're either going into your opponent's clash card to trigger breakthrough, or you're just ignoring their clash cards entirely by flying over them. So pretty solid card. I think you're definitely running this just because it, it's a very well-rounded card. It's early flight damage. What can you say? Alrighty, so we have the four cost next. So this is going to be Magnate ready to fight. It's just a 4-4-4. Four, four, four. It is an alpha clash card and for some reason it's uncommon. I still don't understand why they've done this. I must be missing something. I mean it has a minimum of two green so I guess that's something, right? But let's just move on to the next one because the next one I'm more excited about because the next one is Magnate Unwavering Might. So this is a five cost rare alpha clash card. It's four attack, two defense. If you control four or more Magnate clash cards, you may play this card from your hand without paying its resource cost. Trigger, enter, you may draw one card. You may only play one Magnate Unwavering Might per turn. So this is uh, an awesome card. Initially, I kind of wrote it off. I'm like, oh man, I mean, it's gonna be so tough to get like four magnates in play and you gotta keep them in play and then you can finally play this and you know, whatever. But then I realized like, wait, 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 there's actually, 
there's actually a very legitimate curve here that's actually very like good and very aggro for magnate and it does further reinforce that kind of swarm play style so turn one you drop the the one cost magnate right the cunning planner turn two you drop the two cost magnate turn three you drop the one drop magnate the two cost magnate and you get to drop this one for free so suddenly on turn three, you have five Magnate cards in play. A 1-2, one, two, a 1-2, one, two, a 2-2, two, 2-2, two, 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 and then this is a 4-3. I believe that's the stat line there. I mean, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. So I think this is a really good card in that regard. Obviously, if you're not hitting the, the free aspect to this, this card isn't tremendously exciting you know, you're still drawing a card and it's still a four three which is a fine stat line but for a five cost that's pretty steep I, th I think you're really really trying to hit the free aspect of it which your best bet is going to be on turn three maybe turn four i can see it on turn four as well or you know when you have four resources so yeah uh, that's magnate unwavering might i think this is a much more interesting card than the previous one so yeah let's move along and moving along, we roll right into Magnate the Tyrant. This is a five cost. This is the box topper of set one. So for every box you open, you get a copy of this, which is interesting. It's gonna, you know, imply that maybe you get four boxes or maybe you just buy one, you know, buy, buy something on the secondary market. I'm curious to see how much they go for considering they are a box topper, but also considering that everybody, you know, you would want four of them. Uh, whatever, we'll see. Anyway, it's a 553 exclusive, which means you can only have one in play. Once again, this is legendary, right? Flight, trigger, enter. You may send target accessory to Oblivion. If you do, then all other alpha clash cards you control get plus one until the end of the turn. So this is a pretty darn good card. You know, if you're running a Magnate deck, this is a 5-5-4. Five, five, cool, that's a fine stat line with flight. It's like, hey, that's an even better stat line, right? Three minimum green does mean that like if you're running a green something deck, this is within reason to play. And that trigger enter effect is pretty devastating. You know, we talked a lot about Moxie. This is clearly on the artwork it is magnate fighting moxie that can be pretty messed up for moxie you blow up a moxie's heavy power armor that's a four cost accessory that they also had to spend three to attach to someone or some auxiliary effect to help and then on top of that you get that plus one to all of your alpha clash cards for the turn so this is definitely a card that sees play. It might be a sideboard card. I mean, maybe if you go against someone who's not super reliant on accessories, I don't like Mean Streak and Torque. They have, I think they both have one accessory, maybe two, but they're not accessory focused like Moxie is. I think Clarity, which is the white contender, has one or two accessories as well. You know, like Moxie is clearly the the goal here that you're shooting for and any future contenders that are very accessory heavy so those are good opportunities now the thing about this though is you can of course send one of your own accessories to oblivion so if you put down some kind of cheapo accessory you don't even have to attach it to anybody you just have it in play it operates as a way to give you that plus one later on in the game right and i think that's pretty cool you could run a Magnate uh, blue deck or Magnate white deck, which has some early, well, I don't know about blue actually, but I know white has a cheap, cheap accessory card. Traps do cons are considered accessories. I'm not sure if they're targetable with this because they're face down, but I believe all traps are accessories. So I feel like it'd be kind of, it would make sense that you could target a trap, but I could also see that maybe you can't. If it's a face down card, there's no guarantee what type it is. So, you know, that would be an option as well. So yeah, overall, I think this card is really good. I think if you're running a Magnate deck, this might be your higher end Magnate along with the one we just, we just went over. You might not go higher than this. I mean, we've talked about how hard it is to hit those higher numbers. 
this might you know five it might be the biggest one you're going to we'll see as we look at the other the remaining two magnet cards but this is a pretty darn good one the exclusivity aspect of it is a little weird i mean and i'm not sure that's really necessary but whatever so yep that's magnate the tyrant all right so now we're on to the actual last Magnate card. There wasn't two left. It was just the last one, and then it's Iconic Rare version. Um, so we have Magnate the Undisputed. So Magnate the Undisputed is Magnate's big card. It's eight cost, seven, six, alpha clash card, and it's also epic. So that means it does have the Iconic Rare version of it as well, which just looks fantastic. Looks so good. I love the the glow on the eyes. I mean, I love everything about this card. I pretty much love all the iconic rares, um, and this one just looks so, so good. Um, all right, so the effects we have on it, we have quite a few. We have Awe Factor 2. When this card enters play, all Clash cards you don't control get minus 2 uh, attack until the end of the turn. Breakthrough, Undisputed, which is that this card... Uh, sorry, this clash card can't be defeated during a clash on your turn. And then lastly, uh, if you control two or more magnate clash cards, you may reduce the resource cost to play this card by one green. So it could end up being a four green cost, uh, seven total. So yeah, I mean, this card's good. <laughs> yeah, if you drop it at seven cost, it's a seven, seven, seven innately with breakthrough undisputed, off factor two. Like those are all really good things, right? I think the off factor two is probably the weirder part of this magnet. So as we go through the rest of like all the supporting cards, what you'll notice is there's kind of like three sides of magnate. There's the side that cares about having multiple magnet cards in play, right? The swarmy side. There's the card that there are cards that care about your opponent having low cost cards in play. And then there's a card that cares about your opponent having low power cards in play. The low power card thing does not combo with this because it's only on their turn that it's useful. I think it's like a counter attack or something like that. So I don't quite understand with the whole, you know, the identity of it being like this kind of um, overbearing, really crushing supervillain is kind of oddly realized here. Because like this would be a really good card to use if you had some kind of actions like, hey, if a card's current attack is two or lower, destroy it, right? So then off factor comes in and drops a four, four attack to two, and then bam, you can blow it up or something like that. We just don't see anything like that, at least not right now. I think maybe in the future we will, and it fits the theme better. Well, it fits the theme of he likes crushing the weak or something like that, right? But uh, yeah, so anyway, off factor two, it's more... I think off factor two is like a cherry on top kind of effect. Um, it it helps ensure that your other magnet cards are kind of going unrivaled, right? Like they're they're swinging, you know, because presumably they all kind of have about the same stat line, which is like two two, three three, four four, right? You get they, their stats are the same. Uh, they're matching thanks to magnet's uh, passive ability. So off factor two just makes it so that they can go into kind of these weird trades. Like let's say I know like Moxie has that three one, and you're gonna see that card played often. So now your two two is actually trading into a one one. I think that's really cool. It's not entirely what you're playing this card for, but it's nice. The fact that it only lasts until the end of the turn is kind of a bummer. It would be kind of cool if this was permanent, like while it's in play. You know what I mean? Then you make your entire opponent's board just weaker. I don't know like what you take away from this card to make up for that fact, but I think that would be a pretty cool card to see here, and it, it fits the theme really well. Breakthrough, uh, really good there, right? You, you break through on any card that has high high numbers is just going to really, really hurt. Undisputed, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, it means he can't lose trades. You don't really have to worry about the clash buff. If you can get accessories on this guy that's a pretty big deal i don't think there's a lot of traps that can really do anything to him at that point the surprise card from moxie that's still usable because it says after the clash so this effect has you know come and gone but yeah this is a really nice 
aspect to this card and it does make you feel a little bit more comfortable with it out. That being said, it's not active all the time, right? And by that, I really mean it's not active on your opponent's turn during their clashes. So when it's your opponent's turn, Magnate can still be defeated in battle. That's a little bit rough, but when you're getting to the point that you're able to drop an eight cost, seven cost card, the game's about to end. I mean, let's be honest here. You're, the game's probably ending on that turn or the turn after that. So I, I think Undisputed is kind of in a weird place where it's really nice. And if you're really struggling, like if you and your opponent are kind of in a stalemate situation, I think this card will push you over the stalemate. But outside of that, in, in a lot of situations, this card's hitting the board and the game's ending that turn or the turn after. You know what I mean? So yeah, Magnate the Undisputed. Really cool card, really cool artwork. And that concludes all of the kind of initial Magnate cards. Now we can move over to the rest of the cards. And before we really jump into them, I'll once again just quickly bring up Power Overloading. This is Green's Clash Buff. It's going to be the same as all the others. It's a zero cost clash buff action. You may only play this card if your contender is a green alpha target contender or clash card. You control gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Then you may draw one card. As a reminder, you can only play four clash cards or sorry, clash buffs in your deck and you can only play one on any given card per turn. So in a, this is kind of an addendum to my previous video with the black cards. I did look it up in the rules. So you can play any number of them on any turn. It's just a card can only be affected by a clash buff once for the entire turn. So, yep, this is the clash buff. <laughs> They're all the same. But what is unique about green here is we actually have quite a lot of actions. That was something that I don't think we really had on black. I think we had like two actions over there. So we have quite a bit here. So the first one we got is Sinister Assistance. This is a one cost, basic action, common. Send target clash card with an initial resource cost of one or less to Oblivion. So very simple kind of removal card, right? This is what you're, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe the green in this game is black, right? Like we're going to look at quite a few actions here. The fact that it's a little swarmy in nature. I don't know. I, I'm starting to starting to feel a little magic black going on here. Magic black vibes. So sinister assistance, you know, this card is okay, but uh, I mean, like it's not anything mind blowing. There are a lot of really solid targets for it. That's for sure. Torque has that one cost. It is a very, very good card. It's an epic card that can prevent non-clash damage. So this is just a way to remove it from the board. If somehow your opponent buffs it on your turn, even better, you can sinister assistance it out. There's also a good argument to be made that this is pretty decent against Moxie because Moxie might have a one cost that is kitted to their teeth and weapons. You know, they might have light power armor, heavy power armor on them. So you could have a one cost that is suddenly an 8-8, eight eight, you know, and so this comes, or sorry, uh, it would be a seven, seven in that situation. So sinister assistance is really helpful for just, Hey, you know, you're getting, you're getting heavily punished for doing that. So I, it's a fine card. I think it, it's going to see play. And I think it's especially going to see sideboarding because I think it's going to be very useful against people who are reliant on one cost, such as torque and moxie. It's not mind blowing. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a basic action. Maybe if it was, if it was quick, I would say it's really good. If this was a quick, I'd, I'd say this is actually an insane card, but it's not. Next up, we have Magnate's Plan. So Magnate's Plan is a two cost, still only one minimum green though, which is relevant for multicoloring. It's a co common action card, send target accessory to Oblivion. So, you know, this is, this is what it is, right? This is definitely a sideboard card. It's something that's really gonna counter decks that you know are just innately going to be very reliant on accessories, which right now it's pretty much only Moxie. Every deck can kind of use accessories to some degree. And obviously you don't know what somebody might be multi-building. They might be running one contender, but they might actually be running the black accessories. Who knows? But point being though, is that this is a really good card in those situations. 
it it could be pretty devastating for a moxie player to play fourth or down the heavy power armor and then pay three to attach it and then you just magnate's plan and destroy it up you know, destroy it keep in mind magnate's plan targeting accessories will target any face-up trap i know that's kind of a weird statement to make but in the future, if there ever was a trap that gets triggered and then sticks around, which I could see happening. I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh! obviously does that. They have continuous traps. That would be something to keep in mind. Other than that, I don't think there's much else to say about this card. I don't think that's an auto-include, certainly. But it's there. Okay, going onward, we have Magnate's Gamma Spear. Now, this one is actually one of my uh, personal favorites. So this is an uncommon, it's a one cost, one green, basic action. Target Magnate Contender or Magnate Clash card you control gets plus one attack until end of turn. Then you may draw one card. So I really like this card because A, you know, you're paying one to just cycle. But B, you're getting that plus one. And oftentimes I've felt that that plus one is probably going to go on your two costs with flight, which just means you get an extra damage in this turn at the cost of one resource it could obviously help you in a trade you know you if you really need that extra damage to finish a certain clash card off cool you could put it on your contender too i don't think i don't think there's a lot of reason to do that except maybe if your contender is your only card on the field and you're planning to attack with them that's of course an option available to you but yeah it's it's just a neat card it's nothing special you're not really going to see this put you know, splashed in any other kind of deck. I think you're just going to see in Magnet decks. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's an auto include necessarily, at least not in the future. Right now it might be just because of limitations in the card pool, but it, it's a good card. I mean, you cycle it, it's pay one, you, you get another card back, right? Like it, there's, it, I think there's, you're going to be hard pressed to find a time that you don't play this card. Every time I've drawn it, I've played it. It's, it's a solid card. All right, next up, we got Magnate Charging Up, which I actually initially was like, is this a Clash card? Nope, this is a four cost basic action. Might be the most expensive one we've seen. Anyway, two minimum greens. All Magnate Clash cards you control get plus two attack until end of turn. So that's pretty, pretty relevant. It's not out of the realm of possibility that on turn four, you have five Magnate Clash cards in play. And in that situation, suddenly adding an additional 10 damage of threat onto the table is horrifying, right? We talked about before that kind of crazy curve of just a, you throw your one cost Magnate, two cost Magnate, one cost, two cost, and the free five cost Magnate, I think it was five cost, right? All at the same time, and then you throw this out there on the following turn, assuming you somehow go unscathed. I, I feel like at that point, the game's just over, right? <laughs> like your opponent's just like, okay, I, I have fallen so far behind from this. So I, yeah, I think you're running this. Are you going to be running four copies of it? I don't know. I, I think you could get by with just like three, but it's also a decent resource target. I think Magnate has a little bit of a hard time finding resource targets because a lot of the cards that he has are really useful and the resource targets are typically going to be your like higher cost, more situational ones. I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of the gist most of the time. Moxie gets away with using her low cost because she has so many low costs. Magnate just has a lot of really useful cards that want to swarm the field. He wants those low costs. And so the situational cards are the ones that are going to be the one, uh, what you're considering turning into resources. So I think this is a good option for that. But if you can hit that perfect curve, oh my gosh, that's a, that's a re-rack if I've ever seen one. And then the last action card we got is our quick action for Magnate, Destructive Arrival. This is a one cost quick action, it's common. Counterattack, send target attacking clash card with an attack power of two or less to Oblivion. So this is the one I mentioned earlier. It's like, hey, this would be great um, if I could use it on my turn, right? Because you come in, you play that big eight cost Magnate that drops all of your opponent's clash cards by two. 
attack, this comes in and can finish them off. But that's just not the not the world we live in. It is a very notable card because like when you're playing against a magnate or just any player in general and they have a trap card, sure. You have a decent idea of what that trap card is or what it's going to do. Almost all all the time, it's it's going to screw with somebody that's too cost or lower or too defense or lower. But this is a, a hand trap that's going to blow up something that's attacked two or lower. Moxie, funnily enough, isn't super threatened by this card. Not Not a ton, at least not late game. Just because her equipment itself will push her cards over that two attack amount. But, you know, early game, you're going to have things like Weber with Weber's binoculars on. This that That's a good target for this. It's a decent trade. You're trading one resource and a card to blow up your opponent's card and the resource they spent on the binoculars. I think you're still, I think you're running this card because I just think it's innately good. And hey, if you find yourself in a situation where you just don't see this card being useful anymore, it's a resource, right? So it's a it's a fine card, and uh, yeah, that concludes all of our actions. So with actions out of the way, let's talk about our clash grounds. We got Amazon Rainforest. This is the first one that's Sonoro in the artwork with his, I I have to assume wind wind abilities. Anyways, this is a one cost. It's a common trigger entry. You may draw one card during the draw step of each player's expansion phase. They draw one additional card then discard one additional card. So this is pretty interesting. Every player has to draw two, but they have to also then get rid of a card. Is this a really good card, Magnate? Um, you know, arguably he he's, I think he's more particular about what cards he has available to him because he needs to swarm, but there's gonna be a moment where it's like, okay, I'm done swarming or swarming's not helping me now. I need something else. Whereas with a lot of other characters like moxie for instance you can make that argument kind of with moxie but i feel like moxie at least by default has a pretty good spread of what weapons are available to clash cards and so you're typically going to have a you know especially with binoc the binoculars you're typically going to have a pretty easy time ensuring that you have a healthy balance of the two magnet has no healthy balance if you end up drawing way too many one and two cost cards you're in trouble so being able to draw two and then essentially choose what you want to keep is really nice. And so I think this is a pretty decent card early on. Obviously, Magnet just gets to draw the one extra card from playing it, which makes it <laughs> makes it nice right away. But yeah, that's Amazon Rainforest. Then we got New York City. Now this card is more of Magnate's speed. It's a three cost, two minimum greens. New York City is not looking very good here. It is a rare. Alpha Clash cards get plus two, plus zero, and flight trigger enter. You may draw a card. So, yeah, I mean, Alpha Clash cards get plus two in flight. That's good. Magne does have innate flight on a couple of things, so that's a little bit wasted. But the plus two is pretty good. He also has breakthrough on a couple of things, right? His two cost has breakthrough. His eight cost has breakthrough. I think that's it. So the additional attack power is nice, but they also, I think, I think they both have flight. I know the two cost does. Maybe the eight cost weirdly doesn't. Anyway, yeah, in, in some matchups, this is going to be pretty devastating. If you're going against a Moxie, if you're going against Clarity, they're not really going to have a lot of alpha cards in their deck or any. <laughs> so they're not benefiting from this. And their best bet is to very quickly try to get a clash ground of their own out so that this gets bumped because this is really going to set the, the table against you. The reason I think a lot of these clash grounds give you a card when played is because you're really pumping out a lot of resources and a card for a card that's going to essentially benefit both players. Maybe that benefit causes the card to be mitigated entirely. Like I found myself often wondering like, is it really worth playing the clash ground? Like at what point am I just wasting a turn with three resources? I think if you're, if you're already looking really good on turn three, right? You have the one cost magnate out, you have a two cost magnate out or whatever alpha cards, maybe a Sonoro and you drop this on turn three. Okay. You're probably looking pretty good because now your cards have the plus two. So they're, they're looking like, I think the, the one cost magnate would be a three, two. 
And then whatever else you have is going to be like a 4-2, 4-3. And they both have flight. Ugh, that's pretty scary. But in a larger sense of the game, let's say you draw this on turn five, turn six. Are you really playing it at that point? You might only have one card in play. You might have no cards in play. So I think the draw a card is just to further incentivize you to get this out. Otherwise, it's just it's just a dead card or a resource. But uh, yeah. Anyway, New York City. I uh, personally, I don't think this is as exciting as what was it? Uh, the one in Moxie's deck. The oh, United Nations headquarters. I don't think this is as exciting as the UN headquarters, just because that card just felt so well tuned for Moxie's deck. Gave interception. I think did it give did it give plus defense? I don't remember, but it was something that you know. Right now, nobody else is really going to benefit from. It was mostly just Moxie and Clarity. So we'll see where this goes in the future because you're going to you know, running this against Mean Streak. I think it's going to be pretty rough. Running this against Torque, uh, you know, it could probably still be a little rough. And once again, I mean, in those situations, you're just giving your your opponent free flight, right? And now they can block your flyers. So it's definitely something you're going to have to consider in those matchups. And that's it for our two Clash Grounds. I know I went a little longer on those two. So let's move on to the next cards here. And those cards are going to be Traps. So we're going to talk about Magnate's Trap. This is a two-cost, one minimum green. It is an uncommon trap accessory. Counterattack. Send target attacking Clash card with an initial resource cost of two or less to Oblivion. Then that card's controller discards one card it's fine it's good it's it is what it is right like this counters a lot this is really good against torque i keep bringing him up but just because he's one of the five contenders what do you want me to do here i think it's really good against torque because that one cost you know you have the turns where the the one cost has six power and breakthrough right and he might you, you, the torque player might have multiple of those in play so this is a good way to keep him in check there because, hey, you might, hey, that card could have 11 power for all I care. I can just magnate strap it, right? This also puts some stress on Moxie. Um, it definitely tells Moxie kind of in the mid to late game, late game especially, hey, if you're going to throw those expensive weapons on your two cost Webers, I'm, I'm, you're, you're, th you're potentially going to lose them, right? I'm threatening that you're about to lose the Weber. You're about to lose the, accept the attach cost that you spent on it. Um, so I think this is a pretty cool card. Are you running this all the time? I think there's a good argument that you probably are because it's pretty much universally helpful. The fact that it makes your opponent also discard a card is once again, universally helpful. So yeah, it's a pretty fine card. I could see in the future this becoming something more of a sideboard card as you get more options. But for now, I, I think this is an auto include. The second trap is Gotcha. It is a two cost card, minimum one green. It is also an uncommon trap accessory. Counter trap, negate the effects of target trap being activated, then send it to oblivion. So. This right off the bat doesn't do a whole lot based off the cards we've talked about because none of the traps are really going to impact you in ways that really warrant utilizing this card. Keep in mind, this has to be, you know, this has to be face down in play. Your opponent might think it's a magnate's trap for sure. It's the same cost, but I, I don't know. I mean, are you really running this card? I'm not a hundred percent certain on that at least not in a magnate deck if you're running a different deck if you're running a multicolored deck i think there is a good argument that you're running this card like moxie actually funnily enough benefits from this card quite nicely because you if you're going to throw weapons on low cost low initial power cards you need a way to protect them there are so many traps in set one that go based off that low resource cost that go based off that low initial attack cost that you need some way to stop those traps from just sniping out your equipped dudes. And this is a good way to do it. And the fact that it only costs one green, I think, I think it's a very likely scenario that you're going to see this splashed in other colored decks. 
as a dual colored card. I mean, heck, I mean, you can get away with doing it as a three color deck and just you just run a very tiny amount of green cards. So gotcha, I think it's a it's a very solid card. I think this card is going to be universally used for many, many sets to come because being able to counter traps, if you've played Yu-Gi-Oh, you know how valuable that is. All right, and now to wrap up our coverage of green, we're gonna be talking about the different side allies that you're gonna be running here. The first one we got is Sonoro. He is a one, two, one alpha clash card, common. It's also from Earth. So yeah, I mean, it's a one, two, one. I think if you need the space in your deck, you're probably running this because Magnate makes it a one, two, two, which is really nice. I, it, runs favorably in a lot of situations so pretty solid card nothing too special about it then we got avenging guy this is a two zero one a rogue clash card so that's what that compass symbol looking thing is it's a rogue trigger enter choose another target clash card you control that card gets plus two plus one until end of turn so personally i'm not a huge fan of this because in essence, this is kind of like, think of it this way, right? This is like an action card that gives a temporary buff and then chump blocks, right? And if your opponent has breakthrough or flight, he's not even doing that. So yeah, I mean, I think there are, there's, we're about to take a look at a card that can potentially make use of this in another way. So essentially as cards release that have costs and those costs are, hey, blow up a clash card you control cool this is a d this is an option right it's a I, I still don't think you're running this in a lot of situations but it is an option in that world because what you could use this for is you have like the two cost magnate who is flying breakthrough and you give him plus two plus one well there you go you made the breakthrough of four uh, i just i can't really see a lot of exciting use for this outside of that if this was a one cost i'd say it's a it's a fair one cost but it's not i think this is probably my least favorite card so far that we've talked about possibly in the entire set but yeah we also have avenging guy trying to help this is his three cost version so it's three three one it's a rogue clash card Nothing going on here, right? For a 3-3-1, three, three, that's not great. I mean, if it was a 3-3-3, three, 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 but it's not even that. I, I don't think you're running this. It has one green, so if you really need something in that slot and you're a different color deck, maybe. But yeah, I'm not really sure what Avenging Guy is really trying to do other than be common fodder in packs. Now, we actually have a card that's pretty interesting here, and that is Sonora the Fierce Fighter. This is a rare, three cost, one attack, two defense, alpha clash card. Trigger, enter. You may send another clash card you control to Oblivion. If you do, choose one alpha clash card from your Oblivion with an initial resource cost of two or less and put it into play ready, but that card can't attack this turn. Notably, this card only has one minimum green requirement. So I, this card has a lot of potential, especially in the future. I think right now, there's not a whole heck of a lot of ways to utilize this. Avenging Guy comes to mind just because you can use Avenging Guy as your sacrifice, but you can't bring Avenging Guy back from Oblivion. Because I think there's a cool world where you sacrifice something and then bring that Avenging Guy two cost into play. And the two cost buffs one of your other cards and then chump blocks, right? But that's not really what we're looking at here. It has to be an alpha clash card. So realistically, you're you're sacrificing your one cost Sonoro or your one cost Magnate that has already attacked for the turn. So it's already done its thing. You're sacrificing that. So now you can bring out a two cost Magnate, right? Or two cost something else. It's not mind blowing um, right now, but like I said, I think it has a lot of potential in the future. I also don't know if this triggers the defeat effect. So if it triggers the defeat effect, cool. You defeat your one cost magnate cunning planner and get to draw a card. The other thing is like, if you have alpha cards that 
trigger an effect instead of attacking, right? Like there's a there's a one cost red card that you can engage it to deal a damage to something. That's a good alternative, right? You you tackle something, you transform it into this card that can engage to get some kind of effect. And I think that's probably the best use of it. There's just not a lot of choices for it right now. And then of course, whatever you bring in could just be a chump blocker. It's coming in ready, which means you can use it to block. It also can't be attacked uh, by default. So you have it around for the following turn. Anywho, so yeah, that's Sonoro the Fierce Fighter. It's a pretty cool card. Next up, we have Sonoro the Awakened Breaker. This is also a rare alpha clash card. It's five cost, four attack, three defense. Trigger attack. This card gets plus one, plus one until end of turn, and you draw one card. Then, if your contender is a green alpha, you may ready a clash card you control with an initial resource cost of one or less. So yeah, this card's doing a lot. Of course, in a Magnate deck, he is a 4-4, four, four, which is nice. We're, we're happy to see that, that it's closer to the 5-5. Five, five. The fact that when it attacks, it becomes a 5-5 five, five is good. The fact that you draw a card every time it attacks makes it even better. And then to add on icing there, you get to take your one drops. You can take a one drop and ready it up. Is there a lot you're going to do with that? Yes and no. I mean, if you're in a weird, like, green, red deck, you know, your, your contender has to be Magnate right now. But you could ready that that one cost flare that I talked about that does just plinks uh, free damage. You could ready the other Magnate, Cunning Planner, and swing with it again. Maybe you have some kind of effect, right? We talked about the, the action card that gives all your guys plus two, plus zero for the turn. So there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with this. It's a pretty neat card. Um, so yeah, that's Sonoro the Awakened Breaker. And the very last card we're going to talk about for green is Kagan the Dragon. This is some really, really good looking artwork. This is an epic clash card. It is a six cost, five, five. Takes four whole greens with flight and then trigger enter, you may send target clash card to oblivion. Wow. So it just comes in and he just gets to take down whatever he wants. That is so, so useful. The fact that it has flight is really useful. This is a really good card. We talked about like, what are you running on the upper end of your deck? Are you running that five cost magnate? Are you going to run the eight cost magnate? I feel like you have to be running the six cost Kagan because <laughs> this card is just so universally good. The fact that you can throw it down and blow up your opponent's big card just for free with no, no guff whatsoever and then attack for a five, it, you know, in, in the Magnate deck, it's a five, six with flight. That's just really, really good. So yeah, I mean, that's Kagan. And this is a really good card. I I wish there was an iconic rare of this. Instead, we got an iconic rare of Haven of all people. Ugh. But yeah, I think an iconic rare of this card would look so good. And this is another example of a future contender I really hope to see because he just looks really cool. So yeah, there you go. That is all the green cards. Once again, I thank you for joining me in this video. I hope it was helpful or informative. I hope you enjoyed my opinions as wrong as they might be. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.